enormous red tentacles grabbed her submarine, cracking its hull and crushing its propeller. The unseen beast pulled her down into the darkest depths and left her at the bottom of a deep, rocky trench. Her submarine broken, Marin sat helplessly at the bottom of the sea. She opened her father's journal. On the last page, he had written a note to her. Her hands trembled as she read it. My dearest Marin, I now realize I may never see you again, and I feel that I have failed you. I'm sorry for all the times you went hungry. I'm sorry I could not buy you pretty dresses and paints and books of your own. I wish I could have given you a happier life. Please know that I love you more than all the world. Merrin put down the journal and her eyes blurred with tears. She didn't want pretty dresses or paints. She had a happy life and she just wanted it back. For the first time since her journey began, Merrin had lost hope. She felt the slow, dull realization that her father was truly gone. She watched as the water seeped in through the cracks in the submarine's hull. She could no longer will herself to go on. As the cold water slowly rose up around her, there was a tapping sound from above, and the hatch creaked open. It was Swish. He gently picked Merrin up and pulled her out of the trench. He carried her out of the Forbidden City, through caverns and caves she had never seen, until they reached a place so beautiful that Merrin was certain she must be dreaming. her to an undersea garden of a thousand colors. Beautiful corals of every hue stretched out like blooming summer flowers. Dazzling schools of fish swooped up and down all around her. Merrin had never imagined a place like this could exist below the waves. What she didn't know was that the whole sea was once covered with these gardens, and that this was the last one of them all. Thank you.